We're continuing our study on catechism, and this is from the New City Catechism, which is a really helpful catechism. Really appreciate it. You can actually get the app and check it out. It has um, the answers here, uh, the question, the answer, and then you can swipe. And then if you're like, okay, the next question, what is God? And you're like, ah, oh, let's see, let's see the answer. And it gives you the answer, and then you can even click on a the passage and it can show you a reference that supports um, that that question so really helpful new city catechism you can get the app you can check it out on their website so that's what we're looking at today so here's the the first question question one what is our only hope in life and in death and the answer is that we are not our own but belong body and soul both in life and death to God and to our Savior Jesus Christ so I encourage you to read over that uh, question and answer a few times so that you get it into your, your head. You don't necessarily have to memorize it, though that would definitely be, be helpful. And if you do memorize it, you could even put it into your own words if, if you would like. There's nothing terribly wrong uh, about that, but I um, encourage you to read it over a few times. And I also want to look at uh, two scripture passages that support uh, this answer to question one. The first is from Philippians chapter 1. And Paul says, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in this body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am turned between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, but is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. So basically we see from Philippians 1 that if he's in the body, he, he's with Christ and he's laboring for Christ. And if he passes on, he's with the Lord. And so whether he lives or whether he dies, he is with the Lord. And our next passage is from 1 Thessalonians 4. This is a passage that um, has comforted me many times at, at funerals and with the loss of a loved one or when I've done a funeral. And so 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 14 says this, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who are, who are asleep or are dead, so sleep and death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So this is uh, question one. I encourage you to look back over the answer and look back over these uh, passages. And I hope you can uh, join me tomorrow for question two.